Yesterday, both the euro and the British pound extended gains against the US dollar. A risk on mood was buoyed by further evidence of slowing US inflation. The US producer price index edged up by 0.1% month over month in June 2023 below market forecasts of 0.2% rise. Core consumer prices advanced by 2.4% from a year earlier, while economists predicted a 2.6% increase. The market cheered the fact that statistics might force the Federal Reserve to reconsider its monetary policy and end its tightening cycle. Nevertheless, the regulator will likely raise interest rates at its July meeting and then decide on the need for further rate hikes. Beyond that, traders digested data on U.S. initial jobless claims. The number of Americans filing first-time unemployment claims fell slightly but failed uh, to support the greenback. Meanwhile, the British pound was backed up uh, by upbeat statistics on UK GDP. Britain's economy contracted only by 0.1% compared to expectations of a bigger 0.3% fall, which further boosted demand for the pound sterling. Now let's take a look at today's macroeconomic calendar. It includes data on eurozone trade balance and U.S. import prices. The focus will likely be on the University of Michigan surveys, readings on, of consumer sentiment and inflation expectations. This report may lead to a spike in market volatility. If the indicators decline, the euro and the British pound are expected to hit fresh one-year highs. However, bear in mind uh, that traders may start locking in profits at the end of the trading week with uh, the risky currencies entering a slight downward correction. Therefore, it is too risky to go long at peak levels. The best way to make profit is to buy amid a correction from major support levels. According to the one-hour Euro-American dollar chart, a false breakout at 1.1216 will create a buy signal, thus bringing the price up to 1.1271. Given that the Euro is deep in overbought territory, it may well pull back to 1.1175 or 1.1138. At the level of 1.1138, I recommend going long on a rebound, counting on an intraday correction of 30-35 pips. Long positions at 1.1175 can be considered only amid a false breakout. Alternatively, in the event of a continued rise followed by a false breakout at 1.1271, a sell signal will be generated. In this case, bears will try to drag the price down to 1.1216. If the price fixes below this mark and tests it from the bottom up, the market will face a deeper correction with the euro sliding to 1.1175 and 1.1138. If bulls take the lead at 1.1271 and push the price further up, it would be a wise decision to go short on a rebound at the level of 1.1310 to catch an intraday correction of 30-35 pips. Speaking of the British pound, it's trading just below 1.3137. Given that today's macroeconomic calendar is bereft of any important news releases from the UK, bears need to make every effort to protect this area. A false breakout at this level will make it possible to sell the pair, driving it down to 1.387. If the price forms a false breakout at this mark, a buy signal will be generated. Alternatively, if the price affects below this level, the volume of short positions will increase further. In this case, uh, Stelling will dive to 1.3039 and probably 1.2986. At the, at the mark of 1.2986, traders are recommended to go long on a rebound in the hope of an intraday correction of 30-35 pips.
Long positions at 1.3087 and 1.1339 can be opened only amid a fourth breakout. Going long following consolidation above 1.3137 is risky as the British pound is extremely overbought. After all, it has been trading upwards for two weeks now. Thus, its bearish correction is inevitable. Nevertheless, one uh, cannot exclude an advance uh, to the resistance levels of 1.3186, I'm sorry, 68 and 1.3795, which are likely to act as strong obstacles for further market gains. Good luck and have a great weekend.